Welcome to Tuesday's Devotions. Today we're finishing off chapter 3 of First Timothy. So we're going to read verses 13 to 16. For those who serve well as deacons gain a good standing for themselves and also great confidence in the faith that's in Christ Jesus. I hope to come to you soon, but I'm writing these things to you so that if I delay, you may know how one ought to behave in the household of faith, which is the church of the living God, a pillar and buttress of the truth. Great indeed, we confess, is the mystery of godliness. He was manifested in the flesh, vindicated by the Spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed on in the world, taken up in glory. Amen. Faithful service within the church has many different rewards, but one of the most wonderful is the assurance of our salvation, which comes to us through the Holy Spirit as we serve the Lord faithfully. Look at verse 13. For those who serve well as deacons gain a good standing for themselves and also great confidence in the faith that's in Christ Jesus. And so it's as we serve faithfully, as we honour the Lord in our service, the Holy Spirit assures us of how genuine our faith is and strengthens us in our faith so that we have that wonderful assurance of, of glory to come. Paul then goes on in verse 14 and 15 and explains that he's written this letter to these to Timothy because he wants to come to Timothy and these believers in Ephesus and this is filling the gap. The letter is filling the gap until that time when he can come to them. And the letter is like a, a manual about faithful living within the church family, within the household of God, which is how he describes the church here in verse 15. Now, Timothy teaches that, or sorry, Paul teaches that to Timothy because how people are to behave within the church does not come naturally to them naturally we will do it wrong naturally we will mess it up and so we need god's word always to be guiding us directing us redirecting us rebuking us correcting us putting us right in how we behave within the church this calls for great humility we're not to be those who think that indeed we have it all worked out. Uh, over the years and going to speak to different teachers about my, my daughters, uh, I think maybe around primary three, uh, I've heard uh, teachers say that at that age uh, kids become very sure and certain about things. Uh, they know they're right and it's a time when maybe it's hard for to correct them. And you know, that's true of all of us. We can be so sure we're right. But we need to understand that we need humility in this. It's because we still always have so much to learn and we can be wrong in many ways. Hopefully we're sure and certain of the fundamentals of the faith. But there are many other things we still have to, to get right. It's interesting here that the church is described as a, a pillar and buttress of the truth. In many ways, the work of the church is about the truth. A pillar, not so much in the sense of holding a building up, but a pillar as a war memorial or like a cenotaph, which has a message to declare. The church is to declare this message. And if we're not going to declare this message to the world around us, who is going to declare it? So as a church, as an organization, the church as individual members within it, we have a great responsibility to be a pillar and buttress of the truth. You have that responsibility in your workplace. You have that responsibility within your classroom. You have that responsibility within your estate where you live or along your road within your family. We are those who have the truth when we belong to Christ. And we have a great responsibility to share it. The church is to display this truth of Christ 
to a needy world. And you know, this should excite us because we have what the world really needs, the message of Christ. Paul ends by summarizing the truth in this great statement in verse 16. He says, great indeed we confess is the mystery of godliness. He was manifested in the flesh, vindicated by the spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed on in the world, taken up in glory. It's all about Jesus. It's all about who he is and what he's come to do for his people. Just let me break that up a wee bit. He was manifested in the flesh, revealed in the flesh. He has come down and took on human form. Not some sort of phantom existence, but he took on flesh. The Greek word is sarx. He became one of us. It says he was vindicated by the spirits. I think there's at least two ways that that can indeed uh, be fulfilled. Vindicated by the spirit in that he was raised from the dead on the third day. Raised by the spirit on the third day. The other thing I think being vindicated by the spirit goes to the day of Pentecost. And you remember Peter in the day of Pentecost says about this Jesus who they crucified is risen and ascended the Father. And from there he has sent the Spirit who now is enabled him to speak in these different languages the message of the gospel. And so Pentecost was a vindication of Christ by the Spirit. He is seen by angels. We think of how indeed when Jesus rose from the dead, who were the first people to witness it? It was the angels. The angels rolled the stone away. The angels were there. We think of how when Jesus ascended into heaven, who was there as he was ascending? Angels. Who were there to greet him into heaven? Ten thousands times ten thousand angels to cry, Worthy is the Lamb. Proclaimed among the nations. Go and make disciples of all nations. We think of how indeed Peter, James and John and the other disciples and Paul bring this message of the gospel across the world and how it continues to go across the world today. Jesus is proclaimed among the nations. He's believed on in the world. He is, today people trust in him. Today people all across this world are coming to embrace Jesus. And he's taken up in the glory. That's Jesus who's at the Father's right hand in the place of all power and authority. Oh, what is the message we have to preach? What is the, the gospel that we have to proclaim? It is Jesus, who he is, what he's come to do, what he does for people, how we must respond to him. The gospel is Jesus. He is the good news. Amen.